Okay, how's everybody doing? I have the engine uh, the uh, engine parts in here all cleaned up. The shell is sitting in the sink. Uh, it's waiting for the smoke chamber to be cleaned, and uh, it is waiting. It needs a good cleaning, and it will not go back on until I'm done. I will not shoot a video of that. It's pretty much just the opposite of taking it back up, uh, putting taking it apart. You just have to kind of remember where everything goes. In the meantime, it's time for a little three-in-one oil and a little white lithium grease. Okay, now we want to put. Let me uh, get a toothpick here. It might be a little easier than my big fat hand in the way. We want to get a little bit of three-in-one oil right here. Okay, this is the other end of the armature. This runs through this sleeve here. And we just need a little, just a drop. Okay. You don't want a lot, and if you get any excess, wipe it up with um, a Q-tip because you don't really, you don't want that collecting dirt. It will collect dirt. Okay, and then the same on this side. This is the other end of the armature right here, and it goes through, and it's hard to see here. Let me move this over. Okay, you can see the armature here. Here are the... Uh, brushes and here's the shaft of the armature coming through here now i already put some on on this one earlier i forgot and we're not going to put any more on there because again you don't want a lot of excess on there it will just grab pet hair dirt you'll end up with dust bunnies you'll just be back into it cleaning uh you can also see i put a little piece of black tape here because this was being pinched in between you can see where my toothpick is it was behind that and that's really not good if it uh, uh, over time it was already beginning to eat the covering of the wire and these are just cloth covered wires they're not really again 1950s and so you just it would have eaten through and it would have caused shorts and caused problems and that would have just not been you know pleasant your engine could catch on fire and uh, I don't know what this is on the smoke chamber, but it keeps coming off. And then we want to put, and I've already done this a little bit. I kind of forgot. You want a little bit of white lithium grease on these gears here. A little bit, not a lot. Again, a little goes a long way. You just want a little. Um, you don't want a bunch here. You just want to kind of dab it on there a little bit. And then rotate the, the wheels to let it spread. And the same on this side here with these. You can see I've put some on there already. I, uh, I shot an entire video already and realized after I went back to look at it, my hand was in the way the whole time. You couldn't see. So most of that I've already done. Now, okay, it's done. I need to get the grease off my hands. Honestly, if you don't like the smell of grease uh, or the feel of it on your hands, you know, <laughs> you're going to get greasy. Uh, old grease, new grease. Um, I, I still have the water slide decals to put on this. I've washed it. It needs to get a bath in uh, acid, uh, isopropyl alcohol, but not when I have this much oil on my hands. It, this this will get done much later. And I have the decals and everything. So in the meantime, let's put this on here. We want this here. You can hear my dogs in the background playing in the living room. Um, they're they're going to be uh, having some fun here. I don't have a fenced-in yard here, so they get to play inside. Anyway, let's see what it does. Um, I'm going to put my finger here. Okay, and then we uh, stop it, and then it goes in reverse, or oh, that's actually forward. The other way was reverse. Oh. 
runs pretty good now. I put it on the larger transformer today because I think uh, this is 75 watts and this is, hang on one second and I'll tell you because I have it. This is a 190 watt transformer. Um, when I put this on this transformer the other day, it was sluggish. And I think it's because it's the difference in the wattage, 190 versus 75. Um, this one is still sluggish on this. I put it on there earlier to check. And if I leave the weight of the locomotive on it, it doesn't want to go that fast. If I lift it just a little slightly, then it goes really well. So I will be taking this one apart next. Um, probably not today. Later on, I have way a, lot, a whole bunch of stuff going on around here. And uh, of course, getting ready to move and whatnot. I'm packing and we are, uh, we are getting stuff ready to get off the mountain and the dogs are ready you can hear them anyway so i i will be doing this one later in the meantime i'll be putting this one back together and i probably won't video it because it's just the opposite of taking it apart um and again cameras are your friend if you're unsure about where something goes uh you can you, if you've taken a picture you can put it back without too much difficulty so it really isn't that hard uh you can see this here these are really tough they're very very simple again this is exactly the same as the insides of my 1946 and 1947 the only difference being how the brushes are set up these are a different setup they're not a spring and i actually like these a lot better they, they are a whole lot easier um and and less I don't know, they just seem to be a lot better than the other ones were. And of course, as technology advances, this isn't quite 10 years from that. I think this is 1954. Uh, the wife's dad's Lionel was 1947. So it's, you know, not quite 10 years and it advanced that far. Uh, they also on this, you know, again, I was kind of surprised to find a braided wire on the other two locomotives I've taken apart, it has been single strand um, wire through uh, uh, cloth coverings and um, they break very easy, which is why I say I try to make sure everything kind of stays in a general area. If I have to move one thing, I try to move it all so we're not getting something broken. But I was kind of shocked to see a braided wire here. I still wouldn't get crazy moving it around because, again, this is very old. Um, and unless your soldering skills are exceptional, you don't really want to be soldering this again. And, uh, you know, it, it, and these, of course, there you have it, this bulb unscrews. And there's no spring in there, which I find odd. Most of your, uh, but it's not a, it's not a, bayonet type it's a through screw type so it can make a good connection um it's uh oh 1447 bulb so anyway the bulb i know still works because it worked when i had it in there that's this all nicely cleaned and put back together and it was not as bad as the 46 or the 47 but it still required a handful of uh of uh, q-tips to get it done and a little bit of lube, and it should be good. Uh, if you're going to run them a lot, if you're going to do a layout with these, I suggest checking them periodically and make sure they have enough lube. And again, too much is, you know, grease is a great thing, but more is not always better in this situation. Um, I'll show you this. This one here, as you can see, uh, there's way too much grease on this, okay? And there's hair build up here, in here, in here. Uh, this one is going to be a while taking this apart and cleaning it up. Also, the thing about this is it's totally different engine-wise than the other three that I've worked with. There's the brushes there, and the armature is directly behind that. Um, you can see part of the motor right in here. 
um, I will uh, endeavor to show you. This is part of the motor right here. The armature is in the center. And uh, it, it's a different setup than the other one. So this one's going to be a bit unique. It's going to be interesting for me to take this one apart. I'm kind of looking forward to it. We'll see what happens. But again, you can see the grease. More is not always better. And grease over time, no longer, it becomes a hindrance rather than a help. If there's too much, you can see where it's collected hair and it's, you know, dirt. And it does tend to start getting hard after a number of years. So you, you don't want that much. It doesn't require it. Uh, somebody went a little overboard on these. But periodically, if you're going to run them a lot, it's a good idea to check them. Um, Three-in-one sewing machine oil. Uh, I remember my mother had this for her sewing machine. And I think, as a matter of fact, there was I still a bottle of it left last time I... Uh, I saw her sewing machine. Um, this is great stuff. It works on a lot of things. And it's, it won't harm the electrical stuff in here at all, as with white lithium grease. And you can see my uh, my shop cat here. She uh, came in to say hi. She's checking out my work to make sure I've done it correctly. Does it meet your approval? Okay, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and, and the cat, um, and I will uh, talk to you later, and have a great day. <laughs> Bye for now.